Hey folks, it's Tom, your frugal prepper. So I want to talk about uh, becoming a prepper. This seems to be like more people are thinking like, oh, what do I need to do to get prepared and become a prepper? This isn't about your three-day emergency kit with your flashlight and your whistle and your three days of rations. Uh, this isn't about uh, all these guns and like tons and tons of guns. It isn't about uh, an, an SHTF event or a without rule of law event, although these things will help you if that ever happens. But the most likely thing that's going to happen tomorrow is what's happened today and yesterday. Um, sorry, I got some cats fighting over there. <laughs> uh, so we're going to move into it. I got about 10 things here. And this is just about becoming a prepper and having that mindset of being prepared for all the bad things that could happen to you so that they're not bad things and you can continue to go and have fun and ride roller coasters and spend time with your family even when the economy takes a downturn the stock market crashes you lose your job it's not that big of a deal so uh, the number one thing that you need to do is you need to turn off the tv you need to take your tv and throw it out the window and turn it off uh, you need to quit watching the news and i don't care if you're watching the cnn or the sean hannity or, or whoever right quit watching the news the news tries to uh accentuate facts <laughs> you know they try to blow things up out of proportion to get ratings it's what they do whether it's conservative ratings or liberal ratings they're all trying to get ratings um, and prepping is not about fear it's not fear based it's not like oh I'm prepping because I'm scared that Joe Biden's president or I'm prepping because I'm scared that you know this is gonna happen it's about just being prepared for everyday life things that can happen so Really, uh, the first thing, turn off the TV. The second thing, you need to work, work, work. Pay off all of your debts. Um, you need to have some emergency cash, a thousand, two thousand dollars, and then you need to work and you need to just pay off all of your debts. You need to pay off your cars, you need to pay off your house, you need to pay off all your credit cards, and you need to learn to live on cash. If you can't afford it, uh, going and financing it isn't an option. I'm not against people having credit cards, but you need to pay them off in full every month. Um, or, you know, sometimes you will have unexpected medical bill as I did this last year and I got one credit card that has like $3,000 on it and I'm just paying it off in chunks. But, you know, you have to, you have to have a plan to pay that stuff off and try to live with cash as much as possible. Cash is king. Money will get you out of most situations. There's only two kinds of money. There's enough and not enough. And as long as you have enough money, you can get out of most bad things that happen. You lose your job, you've got money. Your furnace goes out, you've got money. A storm comes along and blows your roof off, you've got money, right? Uh, you have a car accident and wreck your car, you have money, right? Money is important and money is universal in that it can cover everything else we're going to talk about you can buy later with money so having some money is important um, sometimes you will uh, run into something you didn't have in the middle of the pandemic i ran out of concentrated lysol i paid fifty dollars for a half a bottle on some from someone on the internet <laughs> something that's normally like seven or eight bucks but I had the money and I needed the Lysol to make sure that I was disinfecting because back then I actually thought the Corona was deadly. Um, so I happily paid it. But now I have extra Lysol in stock. But money will help cover some of your shortcomings on the rest of these preps. Um, the number three thing I'm going to say that you need is an alternate heat source. And why do I say this before I say food and water in a pantry? Well, most people who are left out in the cold, you know, like are, are stranded in the woods, they die from exposure first. Exposure is the big killer. So you need to have a way to make heat. And that can just be propane or kerosene, or, you know, you could have a wood pellet stove or a wood stove. That's far better because you can always find more wood to burn. But some type of alternate heat source, if you live in a climate where it gets cold, I mean, if you live in Arizona desert, it's probably not as important. Uh, but if you live in a climate like Ohio where it gets, you know, below zero in the winter, you're going to want an alternate heat source. 
I have propane and I have kerosene and I'd like to get a wood stove in this house. I don't have one yet. I had one at my old house. Uh, but that's just something that we're saving up for to get the chimney put in and get a wood stove put in. Um, but I keep uh, right now uh, 20 gallons of kerosene uh, on hand in cans. And I have a 55 gallon drum that I'm also filling up. It probably has about 10 or 12 gallons in it now. And so I'm just keeping some kerosene on hand. I keep plenty of propane tanks on hand as well. Um, number four is to start to build a working pantry. This is like, you, you can learn to can things, to freeze things. Um, and you can just have like staples that you buy, like rice and beans. Um, but stock up mostly on what you eat anyway so that you have extra. Um, consider buying an extra little chest freezer and having some stuff frozen as well. <clears throat> um, just because, you know, if you lose a job, you'll at least have a meals ready to go, right? If something bad happens, if you, you know, when I went to the grocery store a while ago, they didn't have any hamburger patties at all anywhere in the Kroger. I just came home, got some out of my shed freezer, <laughs> made me a cheeseburger. Um, so, you know, that helps you with shortages in the stores and it just helps you in general to have something to eat. Um, and the fifth thing I'm gonna say is you're gonna need some type of an alternate power source, right? This can just be as simple as a little unfoldy solar thing that you can charge your phone with and charge a flashlight with if that's all that you need. Um, you can have a generator and you can have a very small, quiet generator or a great big giant monster that powers your whole house. Um, you could just get an inverter that you could hook to your car and start your car and use that to power some things inside. Um, but one thing that you're gonna need for any type of generator or the car is gasoline. I keep 55 gallons of gasoline on hand and I rotate it out once a year. And I just do that in five gallon jugs just to have some extra gas on hand so that I don't have to run right out and buy gas. Um, I also have, you know, four 100 watt solar panels and I have the, uh, the inverter and the batteries all on hand so that I can put that up if I need to. I don't put it up normally because I did it my old place and I had a tree fall on it and it broke all my solar panels. So I just, I keep it in storage so I can put that up if I need it. I have a small generator uh, that could just run the fridge and a couple lights. I have a great big giant generator that can run the whole entire house. Um, and I will put a link to the video where I wired up the interconnect for that generator. Generators are more of a short term thing, but it's still important to be able to make power um, so that you don't lose everything that you have in your fridge and freezers, mostly. and it would give me the ability to still run my furnace, those kinds of things. Um, so start thinking about that and maybe just start with like a little solar charger thing. Um, and I'll say in, in that too, you can get those radios that have the hand crank and the solar panel built on them that you can charge your phone from and it's a radio. Those are kind of nice. Um, you're gonna need some type of medical preps, all right? And this is important just to have a well-stocked first aid kit, to know how to use it, take a first aid class, take a CPR class, um, and to basically know how to use a lot of the things that are in your medical prep kit. But I also like stock up on over-the-counter med uh, medicine, you know, Dayquil, uh, you know, cold and sinus, allergy medicine. Um, and I also stock fish antibiotics because um, they're pretty cheap and affordable. Um, and they're the same thing as the human antibiotics. Um, and then uh, sevens, learn how to make your own food. I garden, I can't have chickens in my city, but I do grow a garden and I will be eating green beans all winter long and I'm still gonna have some left. Like being able to grow food is really important and you need to do it now to learn how to deal with pest disease, nutritional deficiencies, to learn what grows well for you and what's a miserable failure. I still to this day cannot get an eggplant to grow. I'm trying again this year because I really love eggplant, but I just, they always get eaten with flea beetles and they die. So in an emergency situation, I'm not planting eggplant. It has virtually no calories 
and it always dies. So learn what you can grow, what works well. And you're also gonna to wanna to learn to can, freeze, or preserve that in some way as well. Number eight is develop alternate income sources from your regular job. So, uh, you know, I came pretty close to having to lose my job this year because of the vaccine mandate thing. You know, luckily the Supreme Court stepped in and took care of that. Uh, but people who work in the health industry are still losing their jobs if they don't want to get the jab. And, uh, you know, it's just my personal choice, and I'm not even going to go into that. But you want to have alternate income source sources. So I'm looking at buying a rental property. I fix cars on the side. I have YouTube income. I have Amazon Associates. And I also make dividends off of some of my stocks that I own. So just anything that you can use to generate a little extra income here and there, look look at that. Look at what you're good at, what you could do, a service you can provide. Figure out how to make money so that if you lost your main job, it wouldn't be the end of the world. And a big part of that will also be being out of debt. <laughs> um, and then I, I'm going to put defense on here. You need to learn how to fight. You need to take some self-defense classes. You need to take some hand-to-hand -hand classes. Um, and you need to learn to defend yourself from knife attacks, from gun attacks, when you're unarmed. But you also need to buy a gun. And if you live in a communist country that doesn't allow you to own a gun, I'm sorry. Um, maybe you should move. Um, I would say buy three guns. You're going to need a good handgun. You're going to need a good rifle. You're going to need a shotgun. Um, I would say that those are the three main guns that anybody really needs. And I am fine with buying a 22 handgun and a 22 rifle and a 12 gauge or a 410 shotgun or whatever you want. But just have some guns and have some ammunition for them. Take some classes, train with them, learn how to use them. Training is very important to learn how to fight with a gun or to learn how to fight in general. Uh, but the main thing is, you know, have, have some guns, have some ammunition. Be able to defend yourselves. When the government isn't showing up to defend you and you have to defend yourself and your family, comes right down to it. You know, you avoid having to use that gun at all costs. But when it comes down to it, and it's the only option between your life and your family's life, and dying because the police haven't arrived yet, you have to do what you have to do sometimes. I also carry uh, insurance that will protect me if I'm in a defensive shooting. It'll help pay for the lawyers and that kind of stuff. But those are the 10 things. But I'm just going to say in general, you cannot control what you cannot control. You cannot control people stealing elections or people getting upset. Uh, you, you can't control what politicians do. You can't control what the ATF decides to do. You, you can't control these things. So all you can do is plan for the things that you can't control and try to have backup plans and try to have other things that you can do. You can't control whether they're going to have a mandate or not, but you can plan to have alternate income sources so that you will be okay if you do lose your job. It's up to you to prepare for yourself and your family and your good. Don't ever depend on the government to take care of you. Just like I'm sure right now if we had government health insurance, if it wasn't private, I'm sure right now you would have no health insurance unless you got a shot in your arm. They would use that as leverage. And when the government wants you to do something, they will try to use any leverage they can to make you do it. First, they'll try to offer you a bonus. Like, we'll give you a hundred bucks. We'll give you tickets to a football game. We'll give you a free beer. And then when that doesn't work, they'll try to use mandates to force you to do it. And then eventually they'll show up with guns and try to make you do it. But, you know, that's, the, that's what life is about. Life is about people trying to make you do things you don't want to do. And you can not do them. You can get paid money to do them. You can... Uh, do them for free, but you know, you have to do things in life to survive that you don't want to do. But the government's always going to be trying to make people do what they think is best. And it's important to kind of be able to step back from that and be like, you know what? I can quit my job. I don't have a car payment. I don't have a house payment. I don't have any debt. 
I get this much from YouTube, I get this much from working on cars, I get this much, you know, and I can step up my working on cars and I could get by and live just fine without that. It's important. Um, but that's all I got, folks. I gotta get back from lunch. I will talk to y'all later. It's time, your frugal prepper.